My, my text starts in chapter 5 of Acts 1 through 9. And what's happening here, I'll get to it really quick. What's happening is here, the church started, okay? And thousands are being added, okay? So there's a lot of things going on, and the apostles are handling all, the, handling all these kind of different things. And people are giving as they felt led to give different things, this thing, that thing, whatever. Okay? So the church is growing and growing. And so they're needing different things here, there, here, there. All right? So obviously with that comes, you know, different needs. You know? And so people are giving out of the abundance of their heart to the church, to God. So in chapter 5, verse 1, it starts out, a man named Ananias together with his wife, Sapphira, sold a piece of property with his wife's full knowledge. He kept back part of the money for himself, but brought the rest and put it at the apostles' feet. Then Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has filled your heart, that you have lied to the Holy Spirit, and you have kept for yourself some of the money you received for the land. Didn't it belong to you before it was sold? And after it was sold, wasn't the money yours to dispose of, do whatever you want with? No one's, what he was trying to say, no one's trying to force you, Ananias and Sapphira. No one's forcing you to do anything. You don't have to sell your property. You could keep it, build a house on it, do whatever. You could sell it, do whatever, whatever. You could walk up and say, hey, I only want to give you $5. I, um, I sold this property for 50, um, 50 million. Here's five bucks. Whatever. Didn't it belong to you before it was sold? And after it was sold, wasn't the money yours? Wasn't the money at your disposal? What made you think of doing such a thing? You have not lied just to human beings, but to God. When Ananias heard this, he fell down and died. And a great fear seized all who heard what was happening. Then some men came forward, wrapped him up, wrapped up his body, and carried him out and buried him. And about three hours later, came in his wife, not knowing what had happened. I guess rumors didn't go around, you know. It said everyone heard about it, you know, that was around, and no one told anyone because she's clueless. But anyways, um, so Peter asked her, tell me, is this the price you and Ananias got for the land? She's like, yes. Yeah, that's the price. Peter said to her, how could you conspire to test the Holy Spirit of the Lord? Listen, the feet of the men who buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out also. You may be seated. Now, Ananias and Sapphire, they're kind of, I picture them like myself and my wife and like several couples out here. They love God. They're part of the church. They come to church on Sunday. I don't know if they did it on Sunday. I'm just, you know, paraphrasing here. But um, let's just pretend they came to church on, on Sunday, you know. They did their things like, hey, praise the Lord, you know. They wouldn't be giving to the church unless they were part of the church. So they're part of the church. Peter knew them right? So here they are. They're just, you know, nice couple. And they're wanting to do something awesome. They want to give to the church. They want to sell this piece of property that they don't have to sell. And they want to give it to the church. Sounds, sounds like a really, really, really good thing. But the difference is in the preparation that they had. And that's why I want to title this sermon, Preparation Meets Expectation. Can you lean over and nudge your neighbor or look at someone and say, Preparation Meets Expectation. 
we prepare for all sorts of things, right? All sorts of things. Like who's ever been on a job interview, right? You got your resume all typed up perfectly. You got this above that and that before that. And, you know, you think that, you know, the schooling's most important. So you have it in bold type, you know. Or you have your skills at the very, 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 very top. You know, your name and then, you know, your skills that, you know, your phone number. Whatever. You, like, prepared for this job interview. Maybe you, like, you went to buy a car. You know, people, I work at General Motors, and people ask me all the time, like, what's the difference between a Chevy and a GM? Nothing. A sticker. They're the same. They come down the same line. They get the same treatment. Everything's the same. They look the same. The body's the same. The engine's the same. Everything's the same. GMC, Chevy. Woo, difference. That's it, just a sticker. But no. <laughs> but anyways, my point being is, like, you prepare for buying a car, right? You do your research, you get on the little Google thing or whatever you got, you know. You ask your Uncle Fred, you know, hey, Fred, which one's the best? I want to buy this Hyundai or I want to buy this Toyota, you know, whatever it is. Maybe you go test drive it a couple times, right? All in preparation. Who's ever been married? Who's ever planned the whole marriage thing? You know, <laughs> planning a marriage is hilariously funny sometimes, right? I think they have even um, shows out with bridezillas and stuff like that. You notice how it's never us menzillas? <laughs> Groomzillas? No, it's just bridezillas. I don't know. But like, my wife and I, hilarious story. Like, we propose all that kind of stuff. And yeah, she said yes. It's a miracle, I know. Um, <laughs> but she, she's um, wanting to get married, and I'm like, hey, what's, you know, we've dated for two years. I don't want to wait another whole year to get married, I would have, you know, six months, five months, four months, three months, whatever, somewhere in that range, you know, I want to, you know, whatever. Um, but she goes, well, I really want to get married in August. Well, it's July now. Um, and I, w I really want to get married in August, and I don't want to wait a year, you know? And so I'm like, August? I'm like, okay, fine. August is fine with me. She goes, and my favorite number happens to be 23. I'm like, August 23rd, rock on. Works with me. Um, and so go on about my time and my day and everything like that. And she calls me up and says, hey, you know, um, can you meet me at this building? I'm like, here's the address. I'm like, yeah, sure. Meet her at the building, you know. It says the Christie on it. You know, I'm just like, I don't even know what it is. Just some square box building. And, you know, I'm just like walking in like whatever. And she goes in and says, surprise, this is our reception hall. Um, here's um, Mr. Ron guy, and he's going to do all of our catering for us. And here's this and this. And I'm like, uh, uh, let's go. <laughs> you know, 21 days till, um, you know, the 23rd. And um, we got to get the cake. We got to get the, um, the dress. We got to go get fittings. We got to get the tuxedo. We got to get the invitations. And, I mean, it was like pedal to the metal. But it's about the preparation, always preparing our lives. In the preparation, we take time to prepare all sorts of things. And in eyes and Sapphire, you know they talked it out. Can you picture the conversation that Ananias and Sapphire had? You know, they're sitting over there, hey, I got that piece of property, you know. Um, yeah, my grandmother's uncle's bill, you know, next door neighbor's guy who owned the tow truck. Yeah, he gave it to my, my stepbrother's uncle's sister, and now we have this piece of property. And, you know, do you want to give it to the church and sell it? Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. It's kind of pointless to us. You know, let's go ahead and get, I don't know if the conversation went like this. I'm just kind of making this up, you know. But I'm sure they had a conversation, right? You have a conversation with your, your wife about serious things, right? Can, you, can I get an amen or a little wave of the hand or something like that? You know, when you're selling a piece of property, you, you kind of have this, like, conversation about it, you know. And you're like, okay, you know, I have this little convo with my wife and everything like that. You know, about this piece of property we're going to give to the church, you know. But, you know, I really like that Gucci handbag. Um, well, I really like that Mercedes chariot. Did you see that Mercedes chariot? Yeah, I saw it. It looks good, honey. Yeah, the Bentley looks really good, too. You, we could get that Bentley chariot. Oh, my goodness. You know, why don't we keep back? You know, if it sells for 50000 you know, I'm just making up that number again. It's not in the Bible. But um, 
we sell it for 50000 and then we, like, keep 20000 and we can buy these kind of different things, or we can save it for a rainy day or something. But how would the church know, you know? How would they know? They wouldn't know. How would they know, you know? Anyways, they wouldn't know. So why don't we say that, you know, we just... We sold it for 30, and we're giving the whole 30,000 to the church. Oh, I like that. Yeah, Sapphire, or yeah, Ananias, that's really good. Oh, I like that. Yeah. You know how awesome we're going to look? <laughs> yes. We're going to lay this big old pile of money at the apostles' feet. Oh, yeah. Peter's going to be calling us up. You want to have barbecue at my house? Yeah. Come on over. Yeah, Ananias, I'm sorry. You... You want to be on the church board? Yeah. We're, you guys are just so giving and so kind and just amazing people. We're just, you're going to be standing right next to me. Every single time I speak, you're going to, it's going to be my right-hand man, Ananias. And Sapphira's like, oh, I'm going to be with the church ladies. Oh, we're just going to have the greatest time. You know, Peter's wife, we're just going to be chilling and hanging out and talking about crocheting goats. Something, I don't know what they did. But anyways, right? Can you imagine the conversation that they were having preparing to tell this lie to the apostles? To man and God. Can you kind of imagine it? Because they could be sitting back and they'd be like, come, people coming up to them, they're imagining in their own, own minds and they're like, yeah, we just give it all to the God. I hold to Jesus. That's what we do. This kind of people we are, we're just so humble. That's what we are. I mean, all for his kingdom. Right? And then other people looking at them going, oh, they are just the role models of the whole entire Christian walk. If you want a good Christian walk, just be like Ananias and Sapphira. Look what they done. They gave all they had. All of it. Can you imagine that? Their preparation was about self first. It was all about me, how it would look for me to give this, how what's going to happen to me if I give this, what's going to happen to our livelihood, our situation, our popularity, our everything. Like we think they didn't have social media back then, but they did. It was all about social media, how they looked to other people. Isn't what all those filters are for? You know, you take a picture of yourself, and then you add 50 filters, and you look like, you know, a Greek god, and you like this perfect tone of skin, and no blemishes whatsoever, and I have hair and muscles, and, you know, it's just perfect vents, right? Come on, no. But preparation, their preparation was self, and then giving to God second. Their expectation was that they looked highly upon and they looked honorable. We are taught to prepare from birth. How many of you are preparing your children right now to behave so they have good manners, right? How many prepare them brushing their teeth? Little ones, you brush their teeth? Yeah, you're trying? Yeah, me too. Yeah, we bought the little electric thing so you can just stick it in, you know, and forget about the circles with the manual, you know, brush. You would just, you know, hopefully he gets them. Yeah, we know the teeth are falling out. We know that. They're all coming out. But it's in preparation so when he gets the real teeth that he already knows how to brush. Can I get an amen, mom and dad? Right? It's preparation. I'm teaching them so that when you get the real teeth, you don't have cavities, crowns. Uh, all the other stuff that comes along with it, right? It's preparation. Washing your hands, right? Um, we want you to wash your hands so you don't spread germs, and then germs, when you touch handles or whatever like that, you are washing your hands or putting some Purell on, so, you know, preparation so you don't get sick or something, correct? We do this when we take a bath or teaching them this or that or whatever, teaching them good manners, we prepare our lives in so many ways that it actually hurts deep down inside. 
when someone says, I'm disappointed in you. You're like, you disappointed me. I mean, I'm a good person, this, 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 and I'm, I'm trying my best, and you're disappointed in me? It kind of hurts down inside. Now, if it's your boss, it's like, yeah, I'm disappointed in you too. <laughs> Hello, I needed that pay raise and that promotion, and like, you know, I'm disappointed in your actions of that, <laughs> you know, right? What I'm trying to say is when it hurts so bad, it's because of our expectations of that person. And then, now, it's even worse if it's a loved one, right? What if it's someone that you highly respect and they come up to you and say, oh, I'm just so disappointed in you. It's because your preparations didn't meet their expectations of you. And it kind of digs at us. Because who of any of us says, yeah, I don't prepare at all? No one. We all do. We've been preparing, um, preparing our preparation. Sometimes we beat our own selves up. Who does that? Right? Because we're preparing, we're preparing, and then we didn't meet the expectations that I set. Right? My expectations, and if you know me, I, I love my lawn. I'm kind of crazy about it. But um, the last half of this year, it kind of all fell apart. You know? Um, we had people coming in with wheelbarrows and concrete, and it just... The sprinkler system got drilled into once with the um, deck people, once with the um, concrete people. It's just like, come on. And then to get the guy out there to, like, fix the, um, the pipe, you know, the irrigation pipe, you know, for the sprinklers, that was a nightmare because it, it's not like he drops everything. Vince is calling me. <laughs> Pastor Vince, I, I'm, I'm dropping everything and all my other customers. I'm going straight to his house right now. That's not how it works, I promise you. Okay, so the lawn kind of got um, destroyed because you can't, like, water your lawn, you know. But anyways, next year. But preparation, I'm always working on it. I'm always working on it over and over. But my expectations, my personal expectations are up here. Now, it doesn't, you know, help any that the guy right next to me, there is a perfect line between my lawn and his lawn of bright green lush lawn and mine yellowish kind of I'm like it's fall it's fall he has the same grass as I and there's this dark green line you know my expectations okay my expectations are up here but my preparation is down here some of us um, are preparing for what retirement who's re who's preparing for retirement anyone yeah, we start, what, 20 years ahead, 30 years ahead? We open up that Roth IRA. We open up that whole life insurance. We um, start working at a job where they give us a 401K, something like that, right? We start preparing. You're going to school so you can get a job, so you can take that money to put it away for a later date, you know, right? We're always preparing. We're taught that through all of our lives, our parents are like drilling it into our heads. We don't realize it. We just think that's really good advice. But it's preparation to meet this expectation. Our preparation is so important to us because we're so worried about the expectations that we've set for ourselves. So it causes all kinds of stress, all kinds of anxiety. Different people, they're like, they're like, oh, I want to move into this house right over here. And, like, um, I want this done, this done, that done, that done, you know. And then, uh, well, that's not working out, and this isn't working out, and it's not how I planned that. And it's because our expectations are here, and our preparation is here. But what happened? Something fell out. Something gave way. A sprinkler line hit. You know, this hat. Life happens and gets in the way of our preparation. Like some of us, when we find living for God, have you ever talked to someone when they're talking about living, you're talking about living for God with them? And they're like, it's so difficult. I don't know how you do it. Living for God is so hard. 
But the Bible says, my yoke is easy. Which way is it? Again, the expectations that we put on ourselves to be a godly person or Christian is so high that the preparation seems impossible. So we don't even try. Or we try and we only go partway or halfway. People say, I don't know how you do it. I just can't live that way, Vince. I'm, people at work, they're like coming up to me and like, you're a Christian? I'm like, yeah. And they're like, get to talking more. And they're like, oh, you're a pastor too? I'm like, yeah. They're like, how do you do that? Who said I did? Who said I did? Raise your hand if you're perfect. What? We all make mistakes. All of us in our preparation have our ups and our downs, right? In our preparation, our walk with God, what, I'm not going to fall? Yes, I am. Doesn't matter who you are. Doesn't matter if you're pastor or if you're person on the camera or person on the sound or person wherever. Nobody, but we don't stop. We don't stop trying to live a Christian lifestyle, do you? When we're talking about living a um, Christian lifestyle, we don't stop just because we fell down. Hey, I sinned last week, so ask for forgiveness and keep on moving on. Get back up and keep on moving on. How many of you do that? All of us. Our preparation has to meet our expectations. So if our expectations are here, our preparation has to come up there. We can, you know, oh, I, run, I want this um, out, of, out of life, or I want this out of my walk with God, and we have no preparation. But we have these really high expectations. Ask our pastor. This there's a lot of preparation, <laughs> a whole lot of preparation. I guarantee you on day one, there's a whole lot of preparation going on when he's sitting there having a Bible study with his wife and kids. whole lot of preparation going on. His expectations, have you heard his vision? Goodness gracious, it boggles my brain. I'm all on board. I'm like, let's go. Oh, I'm fired up. I'm like, look, I want to jump in on that bandwagon. I want some of that. You know, I want someone. I want to, like, just grab hold of that tangible, like, awesomeness that's coming off of him. I'm like, yes. Someone has something bigger, a bigger vision, a bigger everything more than I do. I'm like, yes, I'm all in. Let's go. Preparation may have pitfalls, ups and downs. But with God, everyone say, but with God. But with God, other people around you don't see that. They look at you and go, your life is so wonderful. You're always cheerful. You're always with a smile on your face. You know, you just seem like to have a good sense of, you know, being around or whatever. You're just an all-around nice person. It's because of God. God's in my life. He brings joy and that peace in my life when I fall down or this happens or that happens. Everything happens in everyone's lives. It's the joy of the Lord that comes in and touches us. And so we can put that smile on our face. We can walk into our jobs or the grocery store or wherever we may be, and we're like, oh, you're just so happy all the time. I don't get it. It's God. Because God's grace fills the gaps. It's because of God's grace that fills all your ups and downs. You know, when I'm falling, it's, it's God's grace that saves me. I'm not perfect. I'm not wonderful. I'm not great. But he is. And it's through him that I am walking. 
okay? Um, when you see those little um, pictures in the footprints, and there are um, two footprints walking side by side, and then it's just one, trust me, it's just one all the time in my life, okay? Hello, he never sets me down. He knows better, okay? So <laughs> I'll let go. I'll sink in the sand. I'll be like Peter sinking in the water, but it'll be sand. He'll be like, how'd you go down? I don't know, sinkhole. <laughs> but, right? God is there. His grace is picking us up. His grace is meeting that expectation that we have for our lives. He meets us where we are, wherever you are. Your walk with God, it doesn't matter. Wherever you are, he's going to meet you. He takes whatever you have and multiplies it. The little boy with the two fish and the loaf of bread, he multiplied it. He's that little tiny bit of faith that you have. He's going to take it and multiply it. Amen. We have to stop. Everyone look at your neighbor and say, stop. Now look at someone behind you and say, stop. Now look at someone else across the way on either side and say, stop. We have to stop. Our preparations. Myself included, we have to stop preparing for our expectations. And start preparing for godly expectations. That's where we are. Vince needs to stop preparing for what I see. And I need to start preparing for what God sees. That's the picture. That's where God wants you to see. He's like, oh, just let me take control. Just, just... I know you're walking by faith, Vince. I know, Vince. You know, but you're using Vince's eyes. Oh, you got to walk with God, Vince. I know. I, I, I can see you go to church. I can see you pray. I can see, I can see these things that you do, Vince. You know, but, but you're walking with Vince's eyes. You're walking with Vince's preparation. You're walking with your own expectations. And I need to let go. We need to let go. There's a godly expectations. There's a healing in his expectations. There is authority in his expectations. There is a peace in his expectations. Godly expectations take action on our part. You know, your preparation and your expectations... They don't take anything. Pull them, go anywhere. Go in Walmart. Go, go wherever. Wherever you're going to go. You'll have it. Someone like walks in front of you or puts their cart in front of you or anything. You're ah, rude. Because you expected something different from that person. Let someone steal your parking spot that you went all the way around and still open. You come around, zoom, someone goes the wrong way and zips in right through. You were expecting them to allow you in. Our expectations have no effort. There's an expectations that we have when we come to church. We didn't. Every single, every single thing in our life, our expectations, we don't have to work at. But godly expectations take action upon our part. Your, ex, your preparation is needed for godly expectations. Let me say that again. Your preparation is needed for God's expectation. We need to start preparing with God. Even your worst, even your worst, the worst that you could give to God. The littlest that you could give to God in your preparation. Reading your Bible. You read the Bible every single time on, one, on Sunday, right? Once a week. At the end of service, pastor always prays. That's your once a week prayer. 
If that's the littlest you could do, that's better than doing nothing. Amen? Start somewhere. Start your preparation with God somewhere. It doesn't matter how small it is. Oh, but Vince, my walk isn't like that person or that person. It doesn't have to be. Be you. Be you in your walk with God. Oh, I'm just starting out. I don't even have a Bible. Be you. Ask for one. We'll give you one. Be you. Download the Bible app. It's free. Be you. Oh, Vince, I just don't have time. You don't understand, Vince. I have a lot of things going on in my life. I got soccer practice, football practice, hockey practice, tennis practice, golf practice, you know, yoga practice, um, looking through my eyeballs practice. I got mirror practice. I got a hair practice. I got all kinds of practice, Vince. I got things I got to do. Be intentional about your preparation. Plan it. Set a time and a date. Every Thursday at 2 o'clock, I'm going to be praying. Oh, I guarantee you this is going to happen to you. If you are intentional about your preparation with God, something's going to intervene. The devil doesn't like that. You could have all the time in the world right now. Set a preparation with, um, set a godly preparation about reading your Bible at whatever date, at whatever time. Something's going to pop in. Something's going to come across. You know why? The devil doesn't want you doing it. But guess what? You can open up your Bible app and read the daily Bible. Verse. Boom. Read your Bible. Two o'clock. Okay. No one said you had to read five books. It's something simple. Oh, what about prayer, Vince? I need to be on my hands and knees. I need to be travailing before the Lord. Tears have to come out of my eyes for it to be a real prayer. Who said? No one said that. The Bible doesn't say that. Tears thou hast cometh out of the earth. It doesn't say that. All we have to do is say, in Jesus' name, bless this day. That's prayer. Less than five seconds. So a total of 10, 15 seconds. You've done both at 2 o'clock on whatever day. La, 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 la. Whatever. Whatever time. Whatever time. We have to be intentional about your preparation. Godly preparation isn't something that you do sometimes because it's going to happen. It's something that you do all the time. Every single day, every single week, 365, 24 7. You do it all the time. We need to be proactive about our walk with God and we'll see God's expectation, the godly expectation in our own lives, in our own family lives, in our own workplace. We'll start to see that godly expectation. Because God's going to bring us up. Oh, I only can prepare this much. God's going to bring you up. God's grace is going to bring you up to meet his expectation. God's grace is going to bring you up. Oh, Vince, I only have this much. I, I, can't, I can't do it. You know, there's just, uh, God's going to take that little tiny bit that you've given him. And he's going to multiply it. He's going to move in your life like you've never moved before. Because guess what? You took one step. You took one step, I step, you step. When we see his expectations in our lives, in our family's lives, we're going to rejoice. We're going to be like, oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And we're going to be able to do that one more thing. And we're going to do one more thing. And we're going to do one more thing. Because that's how God works. He's going to give you a little bit more and a little bit more, and a little bit more. Can we stand together? I just want to pray over you. Lord, I ask you to touch and move in a mighty way, God. Lord, let us have a godly preparation, Jesus, Lord. In your name, Jesus, Lord. Let us have a godly preparation so when we walk towards you, God, we are doing it on purpose, God. We have a purpose. 
Hallelujah, Jesus, Lord. That our preparation is for you, Jesus, Lord. That we're like not, we're not like Ananias and Sapphira, Lord. That we're not doing this for self, because of self. Or we're going to be blessed and God's blessings are going to like multiply in our lives. And then we can buy this and that. And we can, it's not for self. It's to build your kingdom. And that's all we're worried about. That's all we're concerned about is to draw closer to you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Move in each and every one of our lives, God. Touch us, Lord. Stir us, Lord. Lord, take that one little tiny match and light it. Let it be an inferno in our lives, God. Let it burn inside of us, Jesus, Lord. Let that fire build and build and build until we are consumed with godly expectations. In Jesus' name, God. Bless one seat, church, Lord. Bless every single person here, every single person watching, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.